Raise your hand if you want to have a great relationship with your daughter. And raise your hand again if you not only want to have a great relationship with your daughter, but you also want her to be happy and self-confident. In fact, raise your hand and say, I. I. Maybe your relationship with your daughter is not as good as you would like it to be. Maybe it's not going so well. Perhaps you've watched as some of your friend's children get into serious trouble, and you want to prevent that in your own daughter. Maybe you wonder if some of the activities that your daughter is participating are really the kinds of things that are going to help your relationship in the way that you would most like. Imagine what it would be like if you and your daughter could sit down together and have a comfortable, happy time where you could feel, she would feel comfortable about asking you any question that she wanted to, and you would feel at ease replying and, and giving some advice. Picture what it would be like if the two of you could explore your own creativity together and really feel that you were learning how to be more resourceful and really participating in something together. Wouldn't you agree though that if things are not going the way you would really like them to go that you would need to do something together, that you would need to do something differently. That you would need a vehicle to get from where you are now to where you would like to be. I'd like to talk to you now about the art of bonding together with your daughter through sewing. Mothers and daughters have been making garments and things for the home as long as there's been history. Cave men and cave women sewed skins together or at least wrapped them around their bodies and found some way to tie them to on. Through the ages, women together had this time even though they had lots and lots of things to do, and they may not have been able to have lots of fabric and beautiful things to work with. They still were doing sewing together and having that relationship where they had that time together, where mother gave some techniques that she had learned, passed them on to her daughter. But that time has is difficult to do now. It's so easy to get clothes and whatever you want for the home by just buying it. And that sort of thing is lost. If you had been there when I was a young girl growing up in Washington State in a little town called Bothell, about 15 miles from Seattle, you would have seen that my family was, in my way, in my opinion, quite different from other people's family. Have you ever felt just different? That you didn't fit in quite well, quite the same? The girl across the street that I used to play with was named Cindy, and her mother had long, light brown hair, and my mother was in a, the 40s style of the bun in the back, and I was a, two humps in the front, <laughs> sort of like er Ernestine's uh, hair that Lily Tomlin portrayed for the, the telephone operator. And whenever somebody came into our, my father was a minister of a very strict church, and whenever somebody came into the church to see my parents and said they were coming to the from another church and transferring to ours, that if 
My mother would say, if she wasn't wearing makeup or jewelry, she's as plain as a stick. And I would think, oh, I don't want to be plain as a stick. I want to be pretty, like the movie stars Cindy talks about. Cindy, the girl across the street, told me about Betty Grable and Betty Hutton and some other movie stars. And they had a television and I would watch the different programs and dream of beautiful clothes. My mother made me clothes and when she was trying them on and marking the hem, I would wiggle around and she'd say, Margaret, please hold still. I'm trying to get this, this hem straight. And I would look at the, the magazines that she would bring home from the pattern companies. And I would imagine the beautiful things that could be made out of those patterns. When I was 10, my aunt and uncle offered to take me to Southern California where they lived for the summer. My brother and sister had done that the year before and my mother asked me if I would like to go. Would you like to go, Margaret, and live in Southern California for the summer? Yes, yes, I think I would. I think that'd be fun. So they came up and drove in their beautiful light blue Dodge, brand new, with the fins that were so popular in the 50s. And off we went to Southern California. I noticed that my aunt would sort of dot on a little bit of lipstick as we were in the car. She said, Uncle Harold told me that I had no lips. So I thought maybe I should wear a little lipstick. Hmm. I didn't know about that. That made me a little nervous. Oh dear. <laughs> this was dangerous territory. And we, so when we got to Southern California, I saw my cousin and his wife, Madeline, beautiful Madeline. And she was so lovely. And sometimes we'd go to church with them and their church was a little more liberal. Some of the women would wear earrings and and uh, makeup, and I was kind of worried for their their future. <laughs> During that time, when I was and and also my my aunt and uncle had a television set. This had been a few years since they everybody started having television sets, so I was amazed that they had one. And when we had a program, they loved to watch Dinah Shore. My uncle would call out when, the, when Dinah Shore came on, Hi, Dinah! <laughs> she, he seemed to have a personal relationship with her. But during the summer, we got a letter from my, or my mother saying that we had been moved to the eastern part of Washington. And this was away from the lush green of western Washington state into what was a real desert. When I came back, I didn't have a chance. We were already moved. And I didn't have a chance to say goodbye to my friends. And there we were in the desert. My mother, before school started, decided to, that she needed a new sewing machine. So she went and she bought the sewing machine and they gave her lessons as part of that. She said, Margaret, would you like to come with me and stay with me during the lessons? And I said, yes, that would be, that would be fun. That would be interesting for me. So we did and I watched as the other women learned about sewing and did different projects. And I said to my mother afterwards on the ride home, would you teach me to sew? I want to learn. 
I think I'm old enough to know how to sew. And she said that she would. So little by little, I learned to do more and more. She, at first she did almost everything and only let me do a little bit. But more gradually I learned to sew more.